Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. All right, this impression has been uh, painted with a uh, debubbleizing solution so that the surface tension will be reduced uh, for the pouring of the Valmix stone. Valmix stone has been mixed and is ready for the pouring of the dye in model areas. A small amount of stone is placed initially and this uh, prepared tooth uh, registration is located on this right side and a straight pin with a, a sticky waxed uh, junction to the dowel pin has been placed so that the dowel pin is suspended approximately or at least two millimeters above the uh, area where the pulpal floor was in the cavity preparation. This will allow for enough thickness of the stone die uh, beyond the uh, cervical act aspect of the preparation uh, as well as provide adequate base uh, to the covering the neural portion of the uh, dowel pin. A small amount of the stone is placed first and vibrated carefully along the paddle surface of the impression. And it begins to flow uh, over the cervical aspect of that uh, registration and into the uh, clusal aspect. And it's important that that stone be followed very carefully as it flows into the occlusal portion of the prepared cavity registration. In order to uh, prevent entrapment of air. And as soon as that is visible and it is going across the occlusal portion, additional stone can be added. flows across toward the uh, buckle area. The most critical part here is the filling of the prepared tooth registration and the impression. As soon as the prepared uh, tooth registration is filled, then a considerable amount of stone can be placed in the other areas of the impression. Again, in amounts that will permit vibrating and coverage of the occlusal areas without entrapment of air. When all of the teeth have been filled, and it's important to come back and be sure that the, that the collar of the, that the collar of the dowel pin is uh, with the neural portion has been covered. 
failure to completely submerge the neural portion of the dial pin would leave an area which would be uh, included in the second pour of the stone later on and uh, the die then would be locked in position and uh, it would not be possible to remove it from the base. Now when that portion of the pouring has been completed up to that level, then a few additional uh, increments of stone are placed with this pour so that uh, there will be a mechanical retention lock of the second pour of stone later on to this, to this pour. It's important though to uh, avoid the area where the die will be removed uh, with these uh, increments. And one here for the, the last molar, which would be retained with that second pour in the stone base. This will be uh, allowed to set now until a complete hardening has taken place, and then we'll uh, have the second pour after lubrication and removal of the straight pin, lubrication of the die base area uh, of this first initial pour. After the completion of the pouring of the uh, yellow uh, stone on the uh, upper section of the impression. Following the setting of the initially placed uh, Velmic stone, we have a line of demarcation which shows the uh, two kinds of stone. And then the entire model was separated from the impression. This prepared uh, tooth or die uh, part of this era complete arts stone model. And so uh, it's time now to take the uh, saw blade and, and make a cut which would uh, separate this die from the model. And the cuts will be made between the prepared tooth and the adjacent tooth to the distal and the same on between this and the tooth to the mesial. And these cuts will be carried uh, from the uh, interdental papilla area down through the velmic stone portion of the model so that it may be separated. A separating solution has been placed in this area over the first poured stone mixture um, prior to the pouring of the yellow stone mixture so that after these two are cut, then it would uh, separate. Since the uh, space uh, between the distal aspect of the prepared tooth and the uh, adjacent tooth, uh, uh, the second molar, is so limited. I'm going to use a, a very fine uh, saw blade in that uh, particular area. And this is going to be placed very carefully in order to avoid uh, any contact with the prepared tooth. Now this cutting is taking place going toward the junction of the two kinds of stone, but also then we'll now assume an angle which will converge uh, with the opposite section or opposite cut later. All right, now the first saw cut has been completed and is shown uh, having been carried through the Velmix portion, uh, Velmix stone portion of the model. Now using the uh, uh, a wider, a uh, little heavier blade, uh, since there is adequate uh, uh, space in the mesial aspect to use a larger blade, uh, one which is more durable, then the uh, same process will be carried out uh, Cutting again in the mesial section down to the same depth. The two saw blade cuts now have been completed through the Velmix uh, stone 
portion of the die uh, down to the junction with the Yellowstone. And it's possible to see that, that these two cuts do converge so that there is a taper form to this uh, die base, which will permit its uh, removal and replacement. Now turning the model over and protecting the die against the uh, hand so that it does not uh, bounce out uh, and get damaged, we just tap this dial pin in slightly uh, to allow the removal of the die from the model. And there's uh, a precaution to avoid getting any debris into the area of the uh, model where the die, uh, dial pin is replaced uh, so that uh, prevented, prevention of uh, seating of that die would uh, take place in that event. <clears throat> now the, the next operation is the trimming of the die in order to expose the entire finish lines of the prepared tooth uh, die for the waxing procedure which will follow this. The uh, Bard Parker 25 uh, blade is a sharp and uh, well-pointed blade and most useful in doing this uh, trimming procedure. And the, the object is to get underneath uh, and trim far enough below so as to avoid any damage to the die and yet be able to expose the finish line portion of that preparation. So taking small increments uh, uh, around the die, we proceed to surround the entire die uh, with the trimming procedure until the trimming is completed. The die has been trimmed completely around its circumference now, and uh, all the finish lines of the preparation on this die have been uh, exposed. So it's uh, time to replace the trimmed die back into the maxillary model. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.